But let's start with the guy who actually did choose to commit to the dogs, Nate Frazier, out on the left coast, joining RBU. Go ahead, Roos. Uh, well, I was going to say, man, I mean, tremendous pickup for Georgia. There's no real other way you can sell it. Um, this this guy, depending on what service you look at, and if you're looking at on three, he's the number one back in the rankings uh, at our site. So uh, I tend to lean that way, and his film suggests the same. Um, you look at a guy who's hitting top end speed with ease. Uh, he's finding those holes. He's a one cut guy. Um, just does a little bit of it all. I agree with Charles Powers' assessment, which is we want to see the production increase, maybe going into the senior year. Didn't have all that many carries uh, in the last season, but uh, everything that this guy has put on film is special, man. And to me, the lack of production makes him all the more intriguing. I think that that's exciting, man. I think that that talks about tread on the tires. That's a, an opportunity for Georgia to utilize him further. And realistically, though, you're talking about a three-back class now for Georgia in 2024. They may not have to use him all that hard either. So this is a guy with great film already. He can put together great tape at the next level. And if he's able to do what he's doing here, St. John Bosco playing some of the most elite talent in the uh, the, the, the country, that's modern day versus St. John Bosco. Yeah, just housing it against a guy like Peyton Woodyard and, and company. Uh, just running all over dudes. This is good football he's playing, good players he's playing. Uh, no way to underrate this pick. Georgia gets one of the absolute best and closes out what I think is a tremendous, tremendous running back haul in the 2024 class. He's fun to watch. Yeah, I'm 50. I just turned 50 years old. I'm an old man. So you know what excites me? Warm chocolate chip cookies and contact balance. <laughs> this dude right here. When he put his hand on the ground and kept on running like that's that at full speed, that's that's not natural. So, um, you know, the, I laugh because I've, I've looked at about 12 different breakdowns and everybody used the word contact balance with him. Yeah. But that's that's the new running back term. You know what I mean? It's not breakaway speed and all that is contact balance. And you watch him run through arm tackles. I love a guy, man, that can turn that can turn second and seven into third and two because he broke a tackle. And those those are the most underrated runs. Um, I've known Charles Power now for a long time, and I know what Charles Power covets in a running back, and that's the three down back. Can this guy play on first down? Can he be there on first and 10 in the red zone? You got to sub him out for somebody bigger. Uh, can he catch the ball out of the backfield? Is he a home run threat? He plays at a powerhouse in California there. So uh, when you look at that, I'm not so worried about maybe the lack of production there because he has to share it with like 50 different uh, Division One recruits on that team. And uh, that's that's probably one of the top two or three programs in the country historically. So uh, when you look at look at that, I'm not so worried, so much worried about all that production, that type of thing. But listen, Dell McGee, he flips Chauncey Bowich from Florida. He gets to White Phillips, who might be the fastest football player in America, and then he goes to California and beats Oregon and Alabama for Nate Fraser. Dell McGee, man, well, can we do stock up now? I'm, can I do a quick and do stock up? <laughs> I got, yeah, column, go I got a column. Is, on, cool. I got a column coming on. I got a. I got a column coming on uh, on Del McGee, man. Uh, what I will say, uh, I'll tease you the headline. Del McGee heard the whispers about his recruiting. That's what I will say about that. There was you missed on Justice Haynes last year, right? Yep. And a lot of people were wringing those hands. What's yep. going to happen? You go out and you get a guy like uh, Roderick Robinson, but then you rebound in a way like this in a year that you really needed to do it, where Georgia's going into this season with probably some questions surrounding that running back uh, situation uh, in terms of health, in terms of depth, I think that he goes out and he absolutely knocks it out of the park with this trio of commitments. And um, <clears throat> Rusty, I'm interested because uh, Jake and I talked about this earlier. Um, we've got a, I'll, I'll tease a little Bark After Dark. We might be talking to uh, – Georgia's newest commit on Bark After Dark tomorrow. Um, but we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, uh, we'll keep that one uh, between you and I. But I, what I said, what I love about Nate Fred, and I don't see as much as I used to in high school backs, is that he's a one-cut guy. He finds the hole and he bursts through. I think that you see a lot of high school backs that want to create in the backfield. And they miss two or three tackles in the backfield and they gain four yards. They're not they're, – they're, not the guys that are piercing that hole, hitting top speed and accelerating for those big gains anymore. It's showy to miss tackles and shake dudes off. But if you can do that and do what Nate Frazier does effectively, 
I think that over the long term, that's what people are looking for. I think that's what Del McGee is looking for, most certainly. Yeah, you got to be tough to play for Dell. I mean, that's the first thing, you know, I think he must have just a, a pitcher in his office. If you don't look like this from the waist down, you just can't play at Georgia. I mean, those guys are tree trunks. And uh, you even look at Dwight Phillips, who's not, he's 180 pounds and he's rocked up. You know what I mean? So um, this is a hell of a class, man. And, and listen, we're going to we don't have to beat a dead horse with Justice Haynes. That was a that was a miss. That was a big yeah. miss for Georgia. Yeah. Fool me. But, but what do you have to do? You have to have – you had to go back in. Not only had to get two guys, you wind up with three, and you get guys that bring different packages uh, to the game. Chauncey Bowens is probably 210 pounds. You see him in person. Um, and then you look at Nate, and then you look at Dwight. So uh, all these guys bring something a little bit different. But Georgia, you want to talk about restocking and, and filling that cabinet back up. Uh, this class of 2024 have done that. Del McGee. Uh, he put a stamp on. He put his stamp on this class tonight, today. Comparison, I, comparisons is what I'm interested in too. Uh, yeah. You know, when you think about these guys, my take is I think Dwight is your James Cook esque guy. Uh, you can use him in a number of different ways. Um, J- Jake Rowe and I talked about that a lot. I think Bowens kind of becomes the collegiate Zamir White, not maybe the high school Zamir White. Um, but that's not a bad thing either. Zamir White was a hell of a back in at Georgia. Uh, Strong, yeah. fast, powerful. And then uh, I think you get Nate Frazier. And I really like that comparison that uh, on three has for him of DeAndre Swift. Uh, yep. you know, a guy, that's what he looks uh, like to he, me. Yeah, he plays in that way. And and uh, Jake also mentioned Josh Jacobs for him as well. William Gleaton oh. says kind of looks like Garrison Hurst. He does run like Garrison Hurst a little bit on that one cut, and and that's a great one. I was sitting here trying to think, who does he look like? That's a great one, William, because that that was Garrison's you know signature kind of move right there. Uh, man, that's a great comparison there, Garrison Hurst. Man, that's not a bad one to be named after. To <laughs> yeah, sure, be compared to uh, so that's a great comparison there. Good job. Here's what I like about Frazier's huddle tape that we're playing on the YouTube stream. If you're only listening on podcasts, you definitely want to check out the visual component too. This guy has an entire uh, addendum to his huddle highlight reel of touchdown runs of just him picking up blocks and pass protection. That is not safe for work material if you are watching this and you are a running back sicko because that is uh, that is pretty impressive right there. Here's what I want to ask you guys, just kind of conceptually here. Uh, Georgia, Rusty, you mentioned the uh, – putting the ingredients back in the cupboard there. We had Matt Godwin on a couple nights ago, and, and he alluded to how Kirby follows the Bill Parcells model of building a roster. And Parcells is all about picking out the best groceries. So when you look at what you build an offense around, uh, the past couple of years you've been able to build it around Brock Bowers and freaking people out, wondering where he's going to be. With this much talent in the backfield, dare I say that RBU could be making a comeback here shortly well yes i mean i I think when you look at what stacy searles did so what did he do in this class and and you talking about large humans and bill parcells i mean it doesn't get any more than what georgia just brought in with nine year dan i saw daniel calhoun play the other night and i I was thinking you know this guy's six five and a quarter 350 and he's not there's two other guys in the room gonna be bigger than him so when you start looking at all that and you throw in monroe freeland from last year bo hewley from last year all those guys so when you look at what George has done, particularly in the last, say, 14 months offensively, um, you know, RBU and that offensive line, the physicality, because let's, let's, let's face it, man, um, you got one season left of Brock Bowers, and there's some great football players. There's some great talent in that tight end room. But Brock Bowers, there's not another Brock Bowers. There's not one in college football. So you got to have to find other ways to create and some other guys can get some more touches. So, I think that Georgia running back class for Del McGee had a lot, lot easier sale to say, hey, look, look at these six or seven skyscrapers are going to be in front of you. Is that that what you want to build your legacy around in college? Come on. And uh, those guys jumped in the boat. Frazier, uh, Frazier mentioned a little something that uh, almost suggested that if uh, those guys got touched uh, behind that uh, that offensive line, it was their fault. So <laughs> I don't think I, he's wrong I, about it. <laughs> he said, look at the, I mean, the dudes in front of us are incredible. And um, yeah, he said, if we get touched, that's our fault. That's on us at this point. Cause those dudes are the biggest that they got. I still think, I still think today's world is, is, is fast paced throwing the ball around, but you gotta be able 
to be physical when you need to be physical and, and be able to move people and run the ball. And, um, you know, I'm not sitting here, George's not going back the eye formation and, hmm. and Bobo is not going to bring back a big fullback with a neck roll as bad as I wanted to. Uh, you know, Don't you're going to Rusty. We're going to lose viewers. You, you got a little eligibility left, Rusty, too. I think, man. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be hell for two plays. I'm telling you, that's that. <laughs> you know, tap, tap the helmet like I'm, I'm coming to the sideline. Um, uh, so, but that would that I think George is going to continue to be fast paced. They're going to throw the ball around, but uh, there's time for you got to be able to physical, you got to be able to move people, got to be able to run the ball, especially you know, as you get down in that red zone, you got to have that physicality. And uh, you got to be versatile. You know, I don't think people realize, you know, I was watching the Ohio State game that night. It was on TV. And that first touchdown they scored was a, basically a tunnel screen to Kenny McIntosh in the slot. Yep. You know what I mean? So a guy like Frazier and Dwight Phillips, those guys can do the exact same thing. So Kenny McIntosh, for whatever reason, one of the most underrated players in Georgia in a long time, in my opinion, he was so valuable. He got better as a running back. And, and again, that was a Dale McGee evaluation. And he's already doing really good things with the Seahawks. So I think when you look at those packages, those types of things, it's not just in the box anymore. It's what can you do as a mismatch, putting those guys out. And Munkin did a really good job there in that, I think it was the second series of the game, getting Kenny McIntosh in the slot. Uh, Big Broderick Jones blocked one dude, and Kenny McIntosh scored from about 30 out on basically on a tunnel screen. Yeah, that, that play was about, a beauty. Well, you're talking about mismatches too, and you talk about like what we just said. If you're able to put Dwight Phillips in a number of different scenarios all over the field, I mean, just let him act as an athlete, which he is. And like you said, one of the fastest men in the country. Um, you take a guy like Nate Frazier, who willingly blocks, loves it, welcomes it. I, it has it on the film, right? And then you got Chauncey Bowens, who's over here. If you go check his Twitter out, he's doing lifts that look like Nick Chubb back in high school, man. He's picking up, you know, 600 pounds. No, no problem. So, He's going to be able to take on some big boys, too. And I think that that's really what Georgia sees in all of these guys is that versatility, that ability to contribute. And um, I think you have to give these guys a lot of credit, too. This is a very me-first environment that we're in in this day and age, uh, social media, et cetera. Um, I, I'm not knocking young kids. I'm saying that that's just how it is now, man. It's a, little bit different. It's, a little, it's a little different than it was. But these guys are willing to do – seemingly unselfish things and to come into a class with three guys of this kind of caliber uh, really speaks, I think, to where they are mentally and what they believe that they can accomplish and do at the next level. Chauncey Bones with the quote here, I think we can be the next Sony Gurley and Chubb and rewrite the RBU Mount Rushmore. We'll get back to Mount Rushmore in a second. Uh, mm -hmm. But Bowens with the quote here, guys, the thing that's different about that, obviously, is that Sony – and Chubb were in the same class, but a different class from Gurley. This is three guys in the same class, so that's pretty freakish right there. I do think McGee heard the whispers, uh, Roos, and I think he's come back with the vengeance. This is the Michael Jordan, and I took that personally meme written all over it right here. If someone can Photoshop McGee's face on it, I think you got a photo for the article. 